All right, um, got like 30 minutes of yoga for you guys, 15 minutes of foam rolling. So all you're gonna need is just a little bit of space and a foam roller. If you don't have a foam roller, you can use a football or a soccer ball, just roll on top of that. So let's just get into it. I'm tired of long intros. Okay, so for this yoga routine, I have like 30 stretches and we're just going to basically hold every single one for around 60 seconds. First one is just a deep squat. Put your legs, your feet about shoulder width apart a little bit wider than that and just try to get as deep as you can possibly go in this and just slightly bounce around, not bounce around, you don't want to bounce around. I'm gonna get in trouble for saying that. Slightly move your body in a controlled way around and just try to sink as deep as you can here. Um, disclaimer for this entire routine, I'm not a yoga instructor, I'm not a stretching special specialist, I'm literally just a footballer who is doing a recovery session because last night we played uh, the Columbus Crew, a little preseason game. So I was like, you know what? I could go for some yoga today. And my last yoga video blew up, got like a million views or something, which is crazy. Uh, I appreciate that. So thank you for all, the, all of you guys who are watching and following along with that. And I thought, you know what? Let's do another one. Okay, just a few more seconds holding here. Next, we're going to go into a hip flexor stretch. So we're gonna start with the right one back, left leg up and we're just going to try to push our, our pelvis forward and trying not to like put our abdomen out like this. Try to suck in the gut and hold there. You should feel it right on the right hip flexor here. If you want, you can raise your arms above your head to even deepen the stretch. And again, like in the last yoga video, I tend to ramble and talk during yoga. This is not gonna be a peaceful, quiet, nice namaste yoga video this is going to be me probably being annoying and i'm sorry for that one thing though with the with the stretches every time you take a an exhale every time you exhale out try to go a little bit deeper slightly then you inhale and as you exhale again go a little bit deeper again there we go Okay, a couple more seconds. We'll switch over now to the left side. Bring the left knee down, right leg up, and we'll start in three, two, one. Here we go. Yeah, so we played the Columbus Crew last night. We got spanked. <laughs> we lost three nil, but it was decent. We honestly played pretty well. Um, for the most part. Lots of things to work on. We're still only two weeks into preseason and we've played three MLS teams. So it's been a good start so far. We beat Charlotte FC 1-0. We lost to Inter Miami 1-0. And then we've just lost to Columbus Crew last night 3-0. So, you know, could have been better, could have been worse, but happy so, for the most part. It's been exciting to uh, play these MLS teams as well going up against some uh, pretty big name players. It's, it's fun. It's also cool to test yourself, you know, to see, you know, go up against DeAndre Yedlin with Inter Miami and see what he's like, a good player. Okay, next we're gonna do a little crisscross applesauce. I don't know the name of this one, but uh, <laughs> that's just what I called it in like kindergarten. So literally just get in the crisscross applesauce and we're just gonna kind of lean forward. If this hurts, like really hurts your knees or if any of these stretches is like, you're getting like a pain that's different than a stretching discomfort and you're getting like a sharp pain, don't do it. Don't push through something that's causing you a lot of pain. Try to modify it. You can do different types of glute stretches for this. That's perfectly fine. Um, I'm starting with my left leg over. Well, 30 seconds in, we'll switch over to the right. So right now, switch over to right over left or you can go left over right, you switch the other way. The only thing I was bummed with uh, these preseason games is when we played Air Miami, we did not get to play against Iguain. That was the one player that uh, 
really we weren't able to play against. Okay, next one we're gonna go back into that hip flexor, uh, but instead of going coming up and leaning forward, we're gonna come deep into it. So bring like your left elbow towards your left ankle, or if you're using the other leg, your right elbow to your right ankle, and just try to get really deep. You should feel it right in the uh, like groin hip area, lower hand or upper hamstring area. It's a good one. And it's an absolutely beautiful day today here in Charleston. It's like 65 degrees right now. It's like 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Fantastic. I'm loving it here. Once again, every time you exhale, try to go a little bit deeper. Three, two, one. Okay, switch over to the other leg. Same thing, try to bring that elbow all the way down to the ankle, starting in a couple seconds here. And go. talked about in my uh, my last yoga video but um you know stretching a lot of people think is like really really going to prevent injuries or it's really really good to deal with soreness it's a little overrated in that aspect to be honest like injury prevention really comes from like a really good resistance training program to work on and prehab routine to work on that but stretching isn't going to hurt and having more mobility is always always a good thing for the most part. Next one, we have a pigeon. So try to put your leg, your shin, outside shin on the ground. I'm just gonna come down. We should feel this in our glutes. I'm going with the right leg first. But yeah, the, the number one way really for injury prevention is, is doing a very good football specific gym routine. It doesn't have to be heavy weights. It doesn't have to be, you know, even with weights at all. It can be body weight. Can just be band work but you need to be strengthening up um, and keeping your body in balance that's the main way stretching getting more more mobility especially active mobility is always really good on the field and you feel like even after this yoga session you're just gonna feel so loose and you will feel better but uh yeah mainly mainly recovery is about sleeping eating right and and being fit in the first place and preventing injuries is, is again, just being strong, balanced, taking care of your body. All right, switch over to the other leg. Go, go left leg now. Let me know too, for future yoga routines, future videos, if you guys wanna have longer, like more yoga, more foam rolling, because I was curious of like what to do, because the last one was just 45 minutes straight of stretching. This one, I'm doing 30 minutes of stretching, around 30 minutes of stretching, and around 15 minutes of foam rolling. Um, so I'm curious to see if you guys wanna have like longer stretching sessions, shorter stretching sessions, more foam rolling, less foam rolling, if you don't like the foam rolling, um, what like the perfect length that you guys are interested in. Typically, whenever I do it, I like to do around 40 minutes. So that's why these are both been around 40 minutes. But let me know in the comment section. Okay, there we go. Pigeon done. Next, we're going to go with the frog. My mat is kind of sideways, so I'm going to come to the frog this way. This one, you're just going to put your knees on the ground as wide as you can and then get back and then try to sink into it. You should feel this. It should be a deep groin stretch here.
One thing I think is always cool too, whenever I play for a new team, play for a new coach, it's like trying to adapt and like play and figure out the style of play and the tendencies and what they're looking for like as quickly as possible. I think that's a really underrated skill. I don't know why I just thought of that, but I think that the best players are able to still like stay true to their own game and how they play, but really adapt and to the new style of play. Um, what's the next, hold on, what's the next one? Outside. Oh yeah, this one's a fun one. Okay, so basically for this one, you're gonna sit like this, put your right heel on your left knee or outside of it, and you're just gonna basically drop it like here. And you should be feeling it on the outside hip of your left leg. But yeah, like, uh, for example, like I've played for teams that have been, you know, possession over everything, building out the bat, the ball doesn't leave the ground, you know, everything's short passes. And I've played for teams that have been, you know, uh, very direct and aggressive going forward and don't waste time on unnecessary possession. And you have your style of play that you, you know, you know, and that you do, but uh, you kind of stay true to that, but you, adapt the rest of your game to that style of play, if that makes sense. Like, okay, other side now. Like for example, like I like to play, um, you know, going forward, aggressive, attacking. But if I'm on a team that's a little bit more possession based, I'll shift my game a little bit more possession oriented, but I'll still contain, like I'll still have that part of my game where I'm attacking up the field. And then when I'm on teams where it's really attacking and direct, I'll still add in, you know, bits of possession and I'll still add in parts of my game that I like to do, but I'm also kind of like leaning towards that style of play. I think that's super important and you have to be talking to the coaches and listening as carefully as you can about like their talking points and what they're looking for. It's a good thing to have as a player. I've seen very high level players not able to adapt like that and uh, they struggle. And I've seen, you know, decent players. Oh, still got 20 seconds, so I was way off. And I've seen decent players um, make a really good name for themselves at multiple teams because they're able to be coachable and adapt to different styles of play. And I've been working a lot here of trying to do exactly that because the, uh, the style of play is pretty different than some of my previous teams. Okay, next we're gonna just do the classic classic quad stretch that you guys probably do all the time. So I'm gonna start with the left. I like to go like seated like this, kind of lean back. I feel like this gives me the best quad stretch. Um, but if you wanna go standing up, if you wanna do a different quad, go for it. And again, if you're feeling, if this is like giving you knee pain or something, stop, modify it, find a different way to stretch your quad. There's so many good, uh, modifications, different stretches that you can do. You don't need to put your body in a different, in an awkward angle and hurt yourself. Switch over to the other leg now. Uh -oh. Might get into the shade here soon. We'll move it maybe. Okay, so now right quad I'm doing, same thing. Getting in a comfortable position and I'm falling back on my elbow. A lot of people are asking too in the, uh, the last video, the last yoga routine, like how often should I do this yoga routine? How often should I stretch? I think it's, up, it's completely up to you how much you want to do it. I know professional players that do yoga every single day. And I know professional players that have never once done yoga. Um, I personally, my like typical like routine, what I do is I, I like to do one long form yoga session like this, like 40 minutes or so. 
um, once a week. And then every day after training, before training, I'm doing yoga style exercises, yoga movements. Um, and I've probably like 20 minutes before, 10, 15 minutes after. Okay, next one, we're gonna go hamstrings. So same typical thing, just feet forward. Lean down, touch the toes. <clears throat> but yeah, I'll like get into the, uh, the facilities, I'll get into the, uh, the locker room and I'll do like a hop in the hot tub, get a little warmed up, start to, uh, to get the blood moving around and then I'll come out and I'll do some like band work exercises for the hip flexors, for the groins, for the ankles. And then I'll do a little bit of like yoga stuff like this, but not holding it for 60 seconds, kind of more dynamic, moving it around a little bit. And I'll do that for like 15 minutes. And then after training, you know, we always like, we'll stretch as a team for like 10 minutes or so. And then once a week, I'll typically do something like this, where it's like a 45 minute yoga session. But that's just me. You can do more, you can do less, depending on what you want. Okay, there's the hamstrings. Okay, next we're gonna do basically like a one-sided version of the, of the frog. I'm um, gonna stick one leg out, I'm gonna stick my left out. And then I'm going to come back just like this and then lean back, push my butt back. I should be, I should be feeling a really deep stretch on my left groin right now. Sorry, there's not gonna be any cats in this yoga routine video, like the last one with Gucci. I should've done it inside for that, to be honest. Could've had Levi in there as well. Switch sides now. But that was such a beautiful day. I was like, I should do it outside. Feel free to move around too. Like, if there's a certain way, like twisting or whatever, that feels tight and you want to stretch that way, go for it. There's really not that many rules. <laughs> Next, we're going to basically come down with the hamstrings again, but we're going to spread our legs as wide as we can get them and go straight down to the middle. feel my uh, my right side is usually tighter than my left I think because I use my right foot my right leg a little bit more crossing finishing <laughs> finishing shooting over the goal uh, passing everything a little bit more so I think this side tends to tighten up a little bit more that's my unprofessional opinion on it though okay I come out of that, shake out the legs a little bit, and now we're gonna go to the left side. And what I like to do is I like to go like left hand on the foot and then right hand like almost over my head a little bit. 
and like not really over the head because I'm not that flexible, but you should feel it, or at least I feel it a lot in the right side of my lower back. I love this one. Thing was, I was thinking about too because I went back and I, and I watched my last yoga video it's just crazy to think how much time has passed since I made that I think I made that one in in 2020 like the, the beginning of 2020 <laughs> I was like it's just crazy to think about like how that was before COVID how that was before um, I uh, I even had played a game for FC Tulsa. It was all for the Roughnecks before that. That was before I was married, before I got this my second cat, before I switched teams and came over to the Charleston Battery. Okay, switch over to the other side. That's what I think is really cool about YouTube and like uploading videos, like at the very least, is just like I can go back and watch my life like up to seven years now ago and just yeah, it's just weird to reflect on how much has changed and everything. It's weird. It's going to be really weird in like 10, 20 years when I'm old. After this one, I'm just going to restart my camera because my camera shuts off after like 25 minutes or so. So, bear with me. Okay. Next, we are going to get back in that hip flexor position. And this time, we're going to reach back with our arm and grab our quad, or I mean grab our foot and stretch our quad. So basically, I have my left foot forward, right knee on the ground. I'm reaching back with my left arm and I'm grabbing my right foot. That's a lot of words, but I hope that makes sense. This should be a really deep stretch in your right quad, right hip flexor. And then try to push your, your hips, your pelvis forward and try to deepen the stretch as well. I think this is like, from everybody I've talked to, I think this is the stretch where most people are the tightest. And done. Okay, switch over. Pop up that other leg and reach back. Oh yeah. Sometimes after a game, if I've ran a lot and I do this stretch and I'm bringing my, my left leg or right leg up, I'll get like a bad hamstring cramp. I'm always worried. I, I always, every time I reach for my foot back there, I always have a little panic, like a panic attack if I'm gonna have that hamstring cramp. Today's a good day. I only played 45 minutes yesterday, so I'm not too tired. Okay, and done. Next, we are gonna go with downward dog, which is basically a calf stretch, hamstring stretch. I love this one. Feet on the ground, try to keep your feet flat. It's okay if the heels come up a little bit. Palms out in front of you, and you basically are gonna try to push your upper body with your shoulders back, your butt back, and you should feel a deep stretch through your calves behind the knee, into the hamstrings. 
That's a good one. Almost done. Okay. Now we're gonna go into the seal stretch, which basically coming just like this. Try to squeeze your glutes, push that pelvis down to the ground. Could, yeah, it's always hard to describe these these uh, stretches without sounding uh, inappropriate. Squeeze the glutes, push the pelvis to the ground. I think that's a good way to describe it. You should feel this though in your abdominals. Oh, this is a good one. go. My left wrist always kills me on that. Okay, next we're going to have our feet flat on the ground like this. We're just going to sit on our calves just like this. Now this one, if you haven't done this one before, it's going to be painful. Like it's going to be right on top of the ankle. It's going to be very tight. But if you are not that tight or you've been doing the stretch, you should be able to lean further and further back. Now I'm able to go onto my elbows, which I'm pretty proud of myself for. I wasn't able to do this even a couple of years ago. You can also come up too, kind of rock back and forth. Just deepen that, that stretch on the ankles. Okay. Next, we're gonna go basically back in a downward dog, but we're just gonna do one leg at a time. Just a deep calf stretch. So I'm gonna start with the left. Just have the left foot down. Put the right leg on the heel of the left foot and just try to push that heel down this should be like very similar to downward dog, what you're feeling, but more in the calf. I'm gonna switch halfway through and do 30, 30, 30, 30, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna switch over to my right foot. break 10 second break and we'll go back to that left calf again okay back to the left calf really push yourself you know with all these stretches Switch.
Okay, now this next one, I think this is where most people <laughs> were experiencing the most pain. You're gonna sit on your toes. So basically, keep your toes like this, and then you're just gonna sit back just like that. This one, <laughs> I think one comment was like, that toe stretch like sent me to the moon or something. It's funny. But yeah, this is, uh, this can be bad, especially if you're, you know, if you're just in football boots all the time, your feet are just cramped up in there. They can get really, really tight. So it's a great stretch. One thing that also that was really cool um, with playing some of these MLS teams is that uh, multiple, multiple players from all three of those teams came up to me. No, I shouldn't say multiple, multiple. Sometimes there's just one player, but there's always at least one player on, on all the teams that I played that came up and was like, yeah, bro, like I watch your videos. Like they're awesome, they're cool, which is really, really cool to hear. Cause that, my goal has always been to make videos that help, you know, players at the highest level as well as players that are younger and starting out. Cause I don't want to just make videos. I just feel like my niche is a little bit, like I want it to be older as well and help players that are really on the brink of, of becoming pro or playing pro. Okay, three more. Next, we're gonna get back into that, that deep squat again. Same exact thing, but this time, we're just gonna rotate and try to reach up to the sky. So basically, put your hands on the ground like this, like keep your left leg down, and then with the right arm, or left arm down, and then with the right arm, reach up to the sky. Hold it for a couple seconds. You should feel in the groin, back, everything, and come back. And my heels are a little up on this. I'm not, I can't be all the way back. Same thing, opposite arm, come up, hold it, then come back. Okay, last two. And go back into the, the hip flexor stretch. And this time, we're just going to basically let our leg kind of lean out. So I come over on the side of my foot, ankle it out a little bit, and I'm just gonna let my, my hip kind of come out. And I can even push with my hand, just like that. And you should feel this on the, the hip, the outside of the hip. But yeah, like I was saying too, with the, the MLS players coming and talking, uh, and just saying that they appreciate my channel, like, I think that's just very, I mean, it's just very cool. And especially, I mean, one player had even played at the highest level, like, for one of the top 10 teams in the world with, you know, had gotten games and played for that. And I just thought, like, wow, it's so cool that somebody that's literally played at that level with that experience appreciates the videos. You know, I don't think my videos are helping him understand how to play better, but I think, you know, he just was like, yeah, I appreciate it. it. Just gives a really realistic look at the behind the scenes of a pro life. And I just, you know, that made my day for sure. I think that's just so cool. Switch legs. This is our final stretch and we'll go into about 15 minutes of foam rolling. So nice having a house now too and having a backyard and being able to, uh, to do this, just have a little bit more space versus like even in the last video, uh, I had to move my coffee table in order to do yoga in my apartment. So it's just cool that now I got a backyard. Maybe in the next yoga video, I'll have like a swimming pool or something. <laughs> do a little recovery sessions in there. That'd be sick. All right, all done. All done with the stretching. Good work. Okay, so now grab your foam roller if you have one. 
like I said, if you don't have one, you can use a football, soccer ball, and just do all the same stuff just on top of that. Uh, I probably wouldn't use a nice match ball, but whatever you guys want. Let's just do the same thing. So we'll do like each body part, we'll do a uh, little foam roll in that area for around 60 seconds. So there we go. First one that we have is just up and down the back. I've heard you don't wanna go over the lower back. It's up to you. I kind of go right where my lower back kind of starts. And then I stop there, like right about there. I kind of focus on the upper back. I think especially nowadays with like how much we sit, this is one of my favorite foam rolling movements. Especially how much I sit editing videos and stuff. This is like the classic too. Every every footballer, when they come into the locker room, grabs a foam roller early in the morning and will do this. But it just feels good. Okay, now we're gonna do thoracic spine, basically. So what we're gonna do is start with it low or high wherever. And what you're gonna do is hold your hands like this, and then you're just gonna come back and try to just go as far back as you can. And come up, roll like one notch down, do the same thing. Come up, roll one notch down, same thing. Just keep going until you're all the way basically at your neck. <laughs> then you can start over. Okay, there we go. Now we're actually gonna get into uh, our legs. So we'll start with the glutes, put the foam roller down, get into the figure four. So kind of like the outside of your ankle on one of the, your quads, kind of like lean over and find the tight areas of your glute and foam roll there. And now with any of these, anytime you're gonna find little spots of tension. And when you find a tight spot, like right, let me find one, right there. Let your body, like hold it over for a second, pause, kind of let your body, like that muscle relax and sink into it. And then once that muscle relaxes, you'll feel it, then start moving the foam roller a little bit. Some tight areas. It's always my quads that I have the, uh, the tightest areas on my uh, my legs. Everything else is usually okay. Okay, switch over to the other glute. Pop the other leg down, bring the other leg up. Lean over a little bit. And once again, go back and forth. Try to find that tight area. And same with foam rolling as with stretching, like foam rolling is not like the key to recovery. I think when everybody thinks of like, oh, recovery, they think of ice baths, foam rolling, stretching. But the key of recovery is eight, nine hours of sleep at night, hydrating right, and getting good food into your body, high in protein, high in good carbohydrates, some decent fat in there, and water, water, water getting the electrolytes back into your system. That's, that's recovery. It's not, I mean, this is the extra stuff that makes you feel a little bit better. It might be a little bit of a placebo, might relieve the 
area it might loosen you up a little bit, but it's not gonna be game changing. Okay, now we're gonna go into the hip flexors. So this is, I'm gonna put the foam roller like right on, right where my hip flexor is, obviously. And once again, just try to find that spot that's really tight and then let my body sink into it. Where is it? There, right there, right there. And just sink. Damn. Hopefully the lighting is still good with me kind of in the shade now. If it's not too bad. I'm sorry. Cool. Switch over to the left. Start in a few seconds. Okay, here we go. Left side's feeling tight today. Also, what's really important for recovery is like actually getting up and moving, getting the blood flowing a little bit. I mean, I, I guess that's what yoga and uh, foam rolling does as well. Just kind of gets the blood flowing more than just sitting on the couch. But they've done studies where it's like to see who recovers faster. Someone who's literally just lies in bed all day, does absolutely nothing or someone who actually gets up, goes for a little walk, does a little jog, does some activity, and the person that's doing activity has lower perceived levels of soreness, and so it's all perceived, so it's not like 100%, but the consensus seems to be get off your ass and uh, start moving, and you'll, you'll recover a little bit better than just lying in bed all day, which makes sense. Getting the blood moving, bringing more nutrients to your muscles, it makes sense. All right, next we'll do um, hamstring. So, oops, my microphone. Oh no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, hamstring. This is another classic. Every footballer just grabs the foam roller and goes straight to the hammy. It's funny because I've like never gotten a deep foam rolling like myofascial release with the hamstring on this. I have to use like a, uh, a lacrosse ball on a chair to really get into the hamstring. This kind of just feels like surface level to me. But you know, maybe for you, your hamstring is the tight area. But for me, it's the quads. Okay, I'll switch over to the other side. Got about like less than 10 minutes left. Once again, don't forget, after, uh, after this video ends, comment what you want to see in terms of future yoga and stretching routines. Do you want longer foam rolling, longer sessions overall, like up to an hour? Do you want short ones, like a 10, 15 minute one? Do you want, you know, just foam rolling? Let me know. Okay, so there's the hammies. Move on to the quads now. This is my tight area. So if I start crying, don't judge me. Oh. 
especially like not on the IT band, but just on the outside of the quad. God, that area. It's like shaking right now. Also got the hard foam roller. This one's killing. So once again, I'm finding that really tight spot. I'm just letting my body sink into it, slowly rolling over. Oh. Oh, we're done. Okay. Okay, other leg. I see a lot of people too when they foam roll, it's like super, it's like this. That's okay, but you really, it's like a slower process. Like it's like, you should be moving a lot slower to let the muscle relax and let you sink into it. That's deeper. Cause when you just go really fast like that, you kind of just tense up your muscle and it's, you're not really digging in. It's like a deep tissue massage. The worst is when they go really, really slow. <laughs> Tearing up. Yikes. Okay. Next, we're gonna do our groins. This one always looks a little awkward. My favorite, if you wanna do this, if you have really tight groins, you can take a like lacrosse ball or softball and you put it right on top of the foam roller and you have to kind of balance it. And then you lie on it and you kind of dig into your groin. That kills. I had a, I've had both my groins surgically released because I had sports hernias and tears in my groin. So I had to get surgery on both of my groins and they tightened it up so much and I do so much stretching and uh, it, they would get so, so tight after I would train and play. And that with bringing the lacrosse ball or softball there was a lifesaver. That was one of those things where I was like tearing up. It, it kind of hurt so bad, but uh, it helped me so much. But I can feel this with this even. Okay, switch over to the other leg. All we have left after this is just uh, it's just the calves. Actually, we'll do one other thing after the calves. Change my mind. For this, I don't know. I'm in the shade, hold on. Let me move over here. I don't know what it is about my biomechanics or whatever, but it's always like the lower, like the solace, like the lower calf for me that gets really tight and sore. Never, real, never really the actual upper part of the calf. Yep, right smack dab in the middle of that 
lower part of the calf right there. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, calves are a little bit sore from yesterday. Okay, switch over to the other side. Ay. There's a there it is. Okay, you guys got like 10 more seconds, but I'm gonna go run and grab a lacrosse ball. If you guys have a lacrosse ball, go grab one or a softball, baseball. Hold on. Oh, it was literally right at the door. That was not even planned. Okay, now for this one, I'm just gonna do the arches of our feet. So just stand on the lacrosse ball, same thing, and massage out the arches. Bring it up to the ball of the feet. If you don't have a lacrosse ball, or baseball or softball or something. I guess you could use a foam roller. Let me see. Yeah, it's okay. Better than nothing. Or you could just go to Amazon and get a lacrosse ball for like a dollar. It's always funny to me is the, uh, the, like the name brand like balls they have that are like meant for this, the myofascial release that they sell for like 30 bucks. Or you could just go grab a baseball, softball from a sporting goods store or Amazon for nothing. Like this foam roller even was like, I got like 9.99 at um, Ross. But there's foam rollers that are like 80 bucks. There are some, I will say, like the uh, rumble roller with the spikes. I like that one. Or the ones that vibrate and move, uh, those are always nice too. But you don't have to get the expensive one. Oh. Almost done. About 15 more seconds, and we're all completo, finito. And time. Okay, there we go. That was a nice little recovery session. If you haven't already, and you guys are recovering from a game, really try to do some sort of movement, whether that was before this or after this, where you're actually running around, doing a light jog, you know, getting on the stationary bike, going for a little swim, even a long walk or something, but try to get the body moving a little bit. But hope you guys enjoyed that. Hope you feel a little bit looser. If you enjoyed it, please like, like the video. And uh, see you guys in the next one. Peace.